Folks, it's a joy to be with you another Wednesday night. We thank God for his faithfulness. We have been journeying on the parables of Jesus Christ. We have done eight lessons so far, and tonight we continue on our teaching. We, in Emmanuel, we are on lesson eight, talking of the parables of Jesus Christ. And tonight we want to talk about the unmerciful servant from the book of Matthew chapter 18. We can look at several of the parables tonight. We'll encourage you at this time to get your Bibles and your notepad if you have your manuals. And let's get into the Word of Almighty God. If you are in our Zoom room, we want to take the time to welcome you. Welcome our church family, those who have joined us in the Zoom room. We want to welcome those who are watching also on our digital platform. We encourage you at this time to just, um, let's engage. We want to hear from you. We want to hear how these lessons are um, impacting you and what are you receiving from them. If you have not yet downloaded our um, church app, we encourage you to do so at this time because it's a one-stop place where you can get all of the teaching videos, also an opportunity where you can have the manuals and, you know, it can be a blessing for you. You can always um, share it with someone else. We also have a prayer wall in the manual where you can go in there and put your prayer request there. Let's get started tonight. Father, we just want to thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies and your grace. As we get into your word, we ask that you speak to our hearts. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I pray, Father, and God, help us to recognize your call us to show compassion and mercy. And we pray, even as we look into the word, that you'll speak to our hearts tonight in a special way. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, let's um, get our Bibles and let's go to the book of St. Matthew, Gospel, chapter 18. St. Matthew Gospel, chapter 18. And the backdrop of this parable is where um, Jesus was teaching about um, forgiveness. And uh, Peter turned and asked him the question, well, how much do, how many times do I have to forgive if my brother um, sin against me? And Jesus, um, because you see, Peter was on thinking that seven times seven would be enough. But Jesus said much more than that. Let's look at, let's pick it up at verse 21. So Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to 70, seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. So Jesus multiplied that by 10. And then he spoke the, car, the parable, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who would owe him 10,000 talents. Now that's a lot of money, that's in today's um, time, millions of dollars. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who had owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay, all, pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him his debts. Praise God. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denaro. So just a few um, dollars here. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servants fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me. I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his servant, his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant? Just I had pity on you. And his master was angry and delivered him to the tortures until he should pay all that it was due him. So my heavenly father will also do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother of his trespasses. So here we see Jesus. This past parable is really about um, forgiveness or showing mercy and compassion. 
So we see um, this man who uh, owed 10,000 um, uh, dinars. You, you, you think about it, talents, 10,000 talents, right? And he could not pay. He could not pay. So he's asking for, for mercy. And what did the master do? The master showed him mercy. Jesus now needed to convey to each of us that when it comes to forgiveness, there, with the, our Father, there is no end, praise God. There is no limit to God's mercy from which you and I have benefited from. When it comes to mercy, God, amen, is infinite. We should not get concerned over trying to calculate even um, this exact, but we must remember when it comes to forgiveness, we can go to him and he's willing to forgive us. So this man, we see that he was forgiven an enormous sum of money. He goes out and he finds uh, um, one of his fellow servants who had owed him just a little bit of money. And we see the scripture say he, he took him by the throat, verse 28, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me, I will repay all. So the exact same situation, he found himself a little earlier. He now comes into the situation and not remembering that compassion and mercy was shown to him. Look at how he treats his fellow um, servants. The, the amount is small, um, much smaller, just a few days' work. This could readily be repaid, but the gentleman did not, his fellow servant did not have the money to repay it. And here we see how he treated it. What are the lessons we can learn from this parable? Man's sin is so great that God must forgive us infinitely. Praise God. The depths of God's mercy cannot be measured. That's what we must remember. When it comes to God's mercy, it cannot be measured. But we also must learn um, we cannot seek justice without mercy. We cannot seek justice without mercy. I remember in, in the book of Exodus chapter 22, verses 25 and 20 to 27, when it comes to lending, we see that God placed in there, when he cries out to me, I will hear him and I will have compassion. Amen. God wants to have us to have compassion, even when justice requires us to exact what is we deserve. But even in exacting justice or judgment, we must be willing to show mercy. That's what God wants for us. Jesus taught us all through his word that justice and mercies are intertwined. They are interrelated, praise God. They cannot be treated separately. We cannot say that we want to dispense justice without showing mercy. And even at time when we are called to show mercy, we must help others to recognize even that we are showing mercy, but there are consequences to their actions also. Amen. So Jesus in this parable is, is, and you can think of the parable of the Good Samaritan. We see like the golden rule. We have heard that statement. Do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you. This man completely forgot um, what was just done to him. He now entered into a situation where he began to take advantage of the other. Hear what Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 says. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. When it comes to uh, reciprocity, we must be willing to give unto others as we would want to be done unto us. We must be willing to forgive if we also want to receive forgiveness. We must be willing to show mercy and, and with justice even if we want to receive it also. We must recognize here, um, this man, he was seeking the reduction of his debt. The king gave him the, the reduction of his debt. But he goes on, and someone is asking him for the same thing which he had just received, but he was not willing to give it. He was not willing to give it. God wants us, my friend, to recognize when, when it comes to the Lord, he does not keep a record of our sins. Hear what Psalms 130 verses 3 and 4 say. Psalms 130 verses 3 and 4. If you, O Lord, keep a record of our sins, O Lord, who could stand? 
but with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Praise God. God does not keep a record of sins. Our sins are great before him, but if we come to him and we ask him for forgiveness, he is always willing to forgive us. So we see the first, first portion of the parable shows that our God is a God of mercy. God is a God of mercy. I remember um, when David um, had numbered Israel, <clears throat> and it came at, and it, the judgment was God, of God was coming, and God asked him, do you want me to judge you or put you in the hands of, my, of your enemies? David said in, in 2 Samuel 24, verse 14, he said, I am in deep distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great, but do not let me fall into the hands of men. And isn't that same, so, so true? And in this parable, Jesus was showing us that where the king, yes, justice was, was to be met out, but he was willing to have compassion. But we see how man turns around. This man left the presence of the king who had just forgiven him, meets with a man in the same condition, but could not reciprocate, could not extend to the man what he had just received. And in just so many times with us mere men, we are not willing to give unto others what we have received, the forgiveness. We, we find um, in, this parable, in this chapter, Matthew chapter 18, Jesus said, if your brother has an ought against you, go and make it right. How many people have missed out on God intended for their lives because they have held on to unforgiveness and, and bitterness against someone else? Uh, they know if your brother is ought against you, there's the scripture says that you not sit back and wait for them to come. You go and, and, and seek a, a, a amendment, seek a way to, to, to rectify the situation. Don't sit back because what the enemy wants, he wants to, to create those strongholds in your life. Praise God. We must be willing to show compassion and mercy to our fellow men. Just as how God showed us compassion and mercy, God wants us to show us. We want to reflect God. We want to reflect what God has shown us to our fellow men. In other words, God wants us to be a mirror. A mirror, just as you have received, so you need to um, deposit into others. So you need to show compassion to others also. God wants us, my friend, um, tonight to be people of justice with mercy. Justice with mercy. James chapter 2 verse 13 tells us, Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, my friends, but I want my life to be one that... As you know, when I come in a situation where I need um, um, face the judgment of God, face punishment for my situation, I want mercy to be also applied. And my friends, we, we also need to be willing to give that to someone else. Are you willing tonight to, for if your brother or your sister have ought against you, I, like Jesus said, 70 times 7. In other words, you're not even counting. It's infinity. You're not even, you know, you're willing to extend that forgiveness to the one who trespasses against you. It is absolutely important. You know, is there anyone in your life tonight that you have not shown mercy to, that you have not extended forgiveness to? Is there anyone in your life that you are holding on to, uh, you know, that unforgiveness and it has re resulted in a root of bitterness or hatred and resentment has crept in your lives? My friends, yes, we understand. The, the aspect of forgiveness, but also are there people in our lives we need to show also to hold them accountable because whilst we can forgive them, but there are people we need to also hold accountable and that's where the judgment goes with mercy. Amen? Praise God. We don't, we don't want to be one of those who are enablers, neither, right? We show mercy, but we also want to hold people accountable. So Jesus is teaching this parable to teach us something, my friend. As kingdom citizens, our duty in the kingdom is to mirror God, mirror our heavenly Father, who was willing to show compassion to those who are much needed. This man, 10,000 um, talents. And the, the, fa the, the king showed him, and the king is a representation of the father here, showed him compassion and forgive all. It's interested in this parable. You know, the man was 
uh, he was not asking to not to pay it back. He said, I would pay it back. Just give me the time. But uh, the master forgave all. He forgave all. And this man who only held him, you know, a, a few denarius, he was not willing to extend forgiveness. My friends, let us mirror our Heavenly Father in extending forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Reach out to somebody today who have wronged you. Make amends. Make it right with someone who has wronged you, my friend. Then we look at the friend at midnight. Let's look at the friend at midnight, and we go into the book of St. Luke, Gospel, chapter 11. St. Luke, Gospel, chapter 11. Praise God. Hallelujah. St. Luke, Gospel, chapter 11, and we want to look at this parable of the friend at midnight. And this is an interesting um, parable here. I'm going to pick it up at verse 5. And go down to verse 8. Verse 5 to verse 8. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is a friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. And praise God. And then Jesus talked about the persistency in asking and seeking. Amen. So here we see in this parable now, um, on the context of the Lord's prayer, um, our Lord is making this parable. So we see um, from verses 1 to verses um, 4, he's um, talking about the Lord's prayer in this passage of Scripture. And we see it as even Paul and exhort us, we had to pray continually. In other words, there has to be a consistency and persistency in our prayers. So this man arrives at midnight at the house of one of his friends, and he asks for only three loaves because he's a friend who just arrived on a long journey. At this time, if you look at the time, he arrived at midnight, so all the shops are closed. You know, there's nothing open. Um, in the society by them, I think I, it's not like today we, can, we have 24 hours store, you can go and buy something. Think of the society in those days. Everything is shut down. People are in their homes. You know, doors are locked, as the reference made here. Uh, in, in those days, it was not where you would have uh, many rooms in a house, um, per se, for families. There's a good chance um, in this setting here, it was a communal house, also, the guy was still saying, if I get up, my, the, the, my children will be disturbed. They are already asleep. I cannot rise and give you anything. He's saying, it's impossible for me to get up right now. But the, the, Jesus said, because of the persistency of this man, this man would get up. The persistency of his neighbor, he would get up and extend to him. So here we see in this passage, the... the Issue is about timing. So in the first parable, we talk about this man who was not willing to forgive, a heart condition. Uh, we see here, yes, he had just received forgiveness, but we see the hardness of his heart, not willing to forgive his friend, his fellow servant who had just forgiven him. Here is one of timing. The host has to wake his friend in order to make his request, the timing. And so many times we find situations where we are not willing to, to, to extend ourselves to others because we look at it, the timing is not right. So let's see what the situation. The hour is late, but a friend has traveled. And because a friend <clears throat> is now within the situation, although the hour is late, but the situation was important enough, he could go and wake a friend. The neighbor he first expressed unwillingness or his inability to grant the request. He said, if I, I'll have to get up, I'll have to wake up my children, light a lamp, and find the bread, then unbar the door, it will be much easier for him to move on. Do you get it? The timing. He was saying, I'd have to get up. I'd have to wake up my children. I'd have to light a lamp and find the bread. 
then opened the door. The door at this time, the door was already um, bad, locked down for the night. He said it's much easier for him to move on. My friends, think about it. So many times we are in that same situation where we look at it and we say the timing is not right. And we close up our bowels of compassion. But the neighbor kept on persistent. Look at verse 8. He said, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is because, give to him because he's his friend, yet because of his persistency, he will rise and give him as many as he need. So Jesus is saying he may not rise simply because on the basis of friendship, but on the basis of persistency, he will rise. Praise God. The basis of persistency. I love this word. Jesus concludes this parable by bringing forth this word. The New Living Translation calls it shameless persistence. The NIV calls it boldness. The King James Version calls it impunity. And it's from the Greek word anadia. This takes means, and this is only when in the New Testament we find this word, but it means that's one not losing one's face, not losing one's face. In other words, he was willing to stay there in front of him, not willing to move because he was persistent. Some years ago I was traveling, and on my way back when I got to the airport, um, I had a confirmed flight, but I got to the airport, and that airport was crowded at that time. The person who was doing the checking in told me that um, my flight was not confirmed, and I knew I had my, my flight was confirmed. And he, the problem is, he said, I cannot get you onto this flight because you're not confirmed. I remember I, I, I stand right there, and he wanted me to move along that he could um, check in other people, but I stood right in front of him there. And anybody else who needed to check to, checked in had to go around me. And I said, I was not moving because I know I have a confirmed flight. You know, but I stayed there. So every time he looked up from his, his, his keyboard, he would see me right there. He would see my face right before him. And my friends, right before the flight um, closed, he said, come, give me your passport. He checked me in on my flight, and I was on my way. My friends, they have obviously overbooked the flight, but if um, I was willing to just um, walk away, guess what? My seat would have gone to someone else. So Jesus is saying in this parable, and the, the meaning here, not losing faith, staying right there before the person. Every time they move, they're going to see you because, you know what? The need is there. The, the persistency of you, this, the need and what needed to be done. Amen. And Jesus asks of us here that we must recognize here this contrast you know, the contrast of the principle of persistency in the host asking for bread, it also relates to the importance of us to be persistent in prayer, the persistence in prayer. We should, we should at all times, my friend, be willing to ask, seek, knock until we receive what we desire of the Lord. Too many times we, 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 we are not persistent. Jesus said, although he may be a friend, and on the basis of friendship, sometimes we respond. Or you may get respond to or simply on the basis of friendship. But other times, the basis of friendship is not enough. It's a persistency that is needed. And Jesus asked of us here, my friend, to be persistent. Now look at verses um, um, 10 down to verses 13. It's important for us to see how Jesus um, wrapped up this parable. He says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. If a son asks for a bread from any father among you, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will you give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if you ask for an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So Jesus 
ended this parable by equating our persistency in asking to of our Heavenly Father. Praise God. He wants us to recognize <clears throat> that we must be willing to be persistent in prayer, in bringing our requests to God. Uh, verse 9 says, Ask and you shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open unto you. The different degrees of our persistency. Too many times we just end at the asking, but not willing to pursue on, and the, the, the tenacity of standing and staying, and just persisting before God, knocking and seeking until it is open to us. I want to encourage us, my friends, even like Hannah did in 1 Samuel chapter 1, what she did. She, in, the scriptures say in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 10, in bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. Let's think about that phrase there. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and pray to the Lord. We know that passage. She said, Lord, I will not let go on the horns of the altar until you give me a child. Amen. And uh, she left that day. Amen. With the promise of God that he had heard a prayer. I want to encourage you, my friend, doesn't matter what situation that you find yourself in today, do not give up. But be persistent before the Lord in asking of him. Staying in his presence, seeking him, because that by doing so, you will receive. That's how we receive. We receive when we stand and stay in the presence of the Lord. Now, let's um, go to... Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8, and we can look at the parable of the widow and the judge. So we see the first parable we looked at, the willingness to, I just saw our Father, our Heavenly Father forgave us much. He wants us to be a mirror of that heart of compassion to those who have uh, who, who have trespassed against us, who are uh, owing us, he said, we also need to show the heart of compassion. Then we see here in this, in the, the second parable, that he wants us, my friend, to be willing to, um, to, to, the timing will not be right, but be willing to, to, to respond to those who are asking of us, amen, to show compassion to them. Um, it's not just about when things are in a favor, favorable to us. But although the timing may not be right, it may be inconvenience, but the Father wants us to respond. But he also wants to teach us also to be persistent in our asking. Be persistent in our asking. And then let's go to verses, um, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. And here we're going to see the parable of the widow and the judge. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to faint or lose heart, saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. So this judge had a, had a reputation. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversaries. And he would not for a while. But after what he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because of this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God av not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? So here we see in this parable is one. So it's still looking at the uh, a comparison with the friend at midnight to the parable that we just looked at in chapter 11. And here he's telling this parable here of this judge. So let's look at the characters in this passage. So we had this judge here. Let's look at him, who he is. He said he neither feared God nor regard man. He had no concern for either his conscience or his reputation. Have you met people like that, you know, when it comes for, you know, it's like they don't care what people say. So that's what was this unjust judge like. He, he had no fear for God and he did not care what man had to say. He had no concern for the wrath of God against him or for the respect of man. He took no care to do his duty to God or man. 
he was a stranger to both godliness and honor. Are you getting that? So this was the type of person that we were dealing with here. Wickedness in the place of just judgment was one of the worst evils Solomon saw on the sun in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 16. So we see in this man, he, he regarded not God, he didn't fear God, he regarded man, man. So it doesn't matter what this lady did, you know, it doesn't matter. But let's look at the case of the widow. She was forced to appeal to this dishonest judge. She was wronged by someone with more power and influence than her modest means allowed. The fact that her opinion did not have to appear in her op opponent rather did not have to appear in court may have indicated that it was a financial issue. She made a plea to the judge: "Grant me justice against my adversary." The only advantage she has in this place was her persistency. She probably doesn't, the, the parable doesn't tell us she had means to, to, to have someone um, to fight on her behalf, to represent her, but what she had going in for herself, praise God, was her persistency. My friends, sometimes we may not have everything that we need to, to be able to move forward and to get um, the justice that we need, but there are things each one of us have. For this woman, it was her persistency. I encourage us, my friends, to dig deep within us and see what is it that we have um, in plight of our situation. So the plight of this woman in the in big time. In general, she was a widow, had a difficult time, so as we see in Scripture. But God also tells us we have to defend the cause of the widow in Deuteronomy 10, verse 18. God cursed the man who withhold justice also from the widow in Deuteronomy 27 verse 19. A husband could nullify any vow obligation of his wife, but a vow of a widow was considered binding, according to Numbers chapter 30 verse 9. Isaiah lamented that the rulers refused to even hear the plight of the widow. And Malachi said that God would be quick to judge those who oppress the widows in Malachi chapter 3, verse 5. So we see um, this judge here, he, or like a magistrate, we could say he was somebody who could settle issues between um, adversaries or grieve parties, but he come across as had a reputation. He is ruthless. He does not regard God, does not regard what man. He's going to do things his own way. But remember, um, God also encouraged um, in his word, according to the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 21, verse 3, not to do violence to the widow. And Isaiah tells us that to judge the fatherless and plead for the widow. So we are encouraged um, in the Israel society at the time to ensure that the widows are looked after. So how does this judge react? He frowns on her. He took no notice of her cause. Are you getting this? Because she was asking him to avenge her. He took no notice of her cause. He said, um, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. He took no notice of her cause. You could say probably um, with, in some societies, and we, you know, she was not able to bribe anybody. So you know, there was no influence peddling, so to speak. She had no great um, barrister to go and stand before him, who the judge probably res respected, to speak on her behalf. But her consistent cries for help finally drove him to rule in her favor. Her consistent cry for help. Praise God. And verse 4, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet, verse 5, because of this widow troubled me, I will avenge her. Her persistency, staying in my face, you know, constantly he's hearing her. We don't know how his chamber was set up, but I could imagine every day she is in his chamber. Every day he looks up, he's seen her right there sitting uh, on the stool in his courtroom. He probably um, see her walking up and down, could be in front of his courtroom, 
He comes in in the morning, she is right there. She goes out in the afternoon, she's right there. And she's just saying, avenge me. Give me justice. That's all she said. Give me, ju give, give me justice. Praise God. So Jesus applied this principle for the encouragement of God's people to pray with faith and perseverance. <clears throat> so that's what he said in, in his word. He applied this principle to us. In verse 6, he said, Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Praise God. Hallelujah. So God, Jesus here assures them that God will help. God will help. We serve a gracious God, my friend. You need to know that. I believe with all of my heart, we serve a greater, gracious God. If the judge avenged this widow, for whom he had no regards, then surely God will avenge his own people. Amen. He will avenge his own people. If you, you and I cry out before God, God says he will avenge us. Amen. Jesus is just contrasting here the worst in man and the best in God. Hallelujah. This unjust judge, he didn't regard what anybody said, not even God. And God is showing us here the worst in man, but also the best in God. We should not equal, equate God as an unemotional uncaring deity far above what we go here on earth. God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity, my friend. And God listened to us because he loves us and he cares for us. He wants us, my friend. He wants us to come to him. He wants to respond to our situation. And will you, will you and I um, um, tonight, my friend, recognize that we have a heavenly father that we can go. Praise God. Go to. When the Son of Man comes, will there be any faith on earth? Jesus asked this question to tie the parable, to bring it to the end of what the end of the world. Discussion in the previous chapter, he tied it. He said, when, when the Son of Man come, will there be any faith in the earth? You got to know, my friends, faith pulls us. Faith also helps us to be able to to remember who God is. Remember what he has done for us. Remember the loving father that we serve. And because of that, we are not to become discouraged or despondent by it. But we are to recognize that we serve a God who loves us and cares for us. When the Son of Man will he comes, will he find, will there be any faith on the earth? There are changes, my friend. There are changes in the world. And because we see all of the changes and we understand our society is changing, but he promised us um, two things here. The Son of Man is coming, but he also says, will there be faith on the earth? Remember how we started this parable in verses 1, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. You know what it was? The Father saying, this is the time for us to pray. No matter what you see going on and what you see is happening and it seems like um, our Heavenly Father has abandoned the affairs of this world to the ungodly men who's doing what they want. They have no regard for God or man. They fear God, no regard man. And we see all of that is happening. I want you to know, praise God, that even in the midst of this, you and I ought not to lose heart. We ought not to faint, but we ought to stay in the course and let the be faith, the faith that we believe in Jesus Christ, remains strong and steadfast in our heart. You and I, my friend, must be men, men and women who are willing to commit to Almighty God His purpose and His plan for our lives and see it through. Don't faint in your journey. Don't faint on, on what God is doing in your life. Don't faint in who God um, is to you. It is absolutely important. Because of her persistency, she triumphed. She triumphed over the evil due to her persistency. You and I, my friend, if we want to triumph, there must be persistency in our heart. Hallelujah. Let us persevere. Let us persevere, my friend. Let us persevere. Now is not the time for you and I to faint, but let us persevere. Praise God. The world may oppress you, but persevere. We have no one to turn to, but God, you persevere. Jesus exhausts us to be strong in our prayer and faithful to the end. Strong in our prayer and faithful 
to the end. It could be easy for us to say, you know, this unjust judge should have received uh, recompense for how he treated her at first, but vengeance belongs to God. He's the, God. He's the one who repays. But he showed these parables to contrast to us, my friends, one, that we must be willing to persevere and we must be willing to stay focused in prayer to Almighty God. I want to encourage us tonight, my friends, as we look at these parables tonight, to recognize what the word of the Lord says concerning our situation. For too many times we allow this, uh, our situation to overwhelm us. And we see in the first parable, the parables um, of the unmerciful servant, he, was, um, he received mercy, but he could not mirror what he had just uh, received. God wants us to mirror mercy, my friends. He wants us to be those who, um, just as we receive mercy from the Father, to exhibit that before those who come before us. And then the second parable, we look at a friend at midnight. The friend at midnight. And we see in this parable, timing may not be right. And uh, I'm not sure where you are in your journey in concerning um, those in whom you're dealing with and situation, wherever they may be or come from. But my friend, let's be willing to answer the charge or the call of the master when it comes upon us. Then we look at the parable of the widow and the judge, my friends. But, and we see again the persistency here. She did not give up. She stayed before him night and day, night and day, because she wanted justice for herself. I want to encourage us tonight, my friend, to allow this, the word of the Lord to find rest in our hearts and allow God's word to bring about a purpose in the heart. I want to encourage you to come on into the Zoom room, those who want a digital platform for a time of questioning. Let's get in there and let's um, um, unpack these parables. Amen. So that we can make sense of what the word of the Lord is saying to us. Thank you so much again for joining us another Wednesday night on our digital platform. I trust that you're enjoying this journey as we continue to press away into the word of the Lord. God bless you. Come on into the Zoom room at this time. Thank you so much.